So when you uploaded that video, did you see when Sam Clef called you out and he said that? To be honest with you, I got abused a lot for that, but I think people didn't see the bigger picture. Did you feel away when you saw him say that? No, Sam Clef fool. Charlie Puppy and I'm doing my dudes doing that. Most a wanted tour, tour. Yeah, most wanted tour. And it's just, it just looks so dope mm -hmm, mm -hmm. seeing them together. Oh, the picture alone got me. Men are crazy. Because... I'm crazy. <laughs> ah, did you see that picture? No money talk. Many, many money talk. Sitting watching TV and the bad game will come on. So you know. What's going on, everyone? You are now tuned in to another amazing episode of Money Talks. This is a special one. All my shows are special because for you to sit on this couch, you mean a lot to me. I don't just interview anyhow people. I interview the people that are making things happen. You hear me? But this is the first time I'm having, well, technically, I guess he is an artist. I was going to say, I've, this is my first time interviewing someone that is not an artist, but he's an artist in his own right because he is making art. But he's one of the most popping DJs in the country right now in the world because he's not just from Nigeria. He's Akata as well. Actually, no, I don't think Akata is a good word. He's American. He's American as well. <laughs> We got DJ Tunes in the building. Round of applause. Uh, thank you, brother. Really appreciate you. What's going on, Tunes? I'm out here. Molin Soro. Man, I'm Molin Soro. Y'all give me a big name, Molin Soro. But yeah. um, we've been trying to make this happen for a while. Yeah. You know, Tunes got a he got a busy life. Not even just a busy schedule. You can wake up, <laughs> open Tunes, <laughs> Tunes Instagram. Tunes is in LA. You can open it the next day. He's in Ghana. You can open it the day after. He can be in Iceland. He shot somewhere in the world, dripping while DJ. Yes, sir. Ain't that right, my guy? No, it's over. Look at the drip. Please, let's I'm do a full camera, a full camera I'm check. I'm trying. Brother, I'm trying. Brother, I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying. No, I'm trying, man. Just so, uh, the traveling and DJing has just been a part of the story for like the last 10 years. All right. It's been a lot of fun. You know? So let's start from the beginning what how you got into djing what inspired it how you knew it was going to be the career that you make all this money man i mean i started djing basically for my love for music you know mm -hmm. just like what up. age would you i would say just from the age of like maybe like five six you were just Understanding okay, music. Understanding. Okay. I'm not DJ. I wasn't. DJ. <laughs> I was about to say, uh, I, uh, I had a love for music. Yeah. yeah like playing drums in the church, mm -hmm. or just listening to tracks with my in pops. New York, right? Yeah, definitely. Okay. Or listening to songs with my pops, stuff like that. So, from there, I built that love for it. Um, I started probably like when I was 16, 17, like actually DJ. Mm -hmm. Used to DJ once a year, and that was um, my church Christmas party. Okay. And it was every Christmas, you know what I mean, after church. So you used to practice 364 days. <laughs> I mean, it was on my mind a lot. Um, and like I told you, it was just a love for music. For, so from the, ch from the church, you know, the church is a community on its own. People realized, like, you know, I had a wide selection of music. Then, you know, I got called for, like, Sweet Sixteens, baby showers, weddings, 50th birthday, 60th birthday. You know how it is on that side. So mm -hmm. from there, I just blossomed in. And you took off. <laughs> Did you ever have any other career path in mind? The NBA. I wanted to you wanted to play be basketball. Hooper. You know what I'm saying? Um, so you really good. Yeah, I'm really good. Actually, um, I played in the NBA uh, celebrity game this past weekend. Uh, my team won. Yeah. <laughs> Who are your team members? Um, doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> I was the MVP. Yeah. Oh, you were the MVP of the yeah. game. Oh, that's dope. That's you could. You this, could. this and last year is on two, so it's back to back. I know y'all. So I'm really, you know, so I'm just gonna be the best Nigerian basketball player ever. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's gonna hear this stuff. I got you. You know, but um, I studied uh, mathematics and education in school, so I got a love for kids as well. But music and DJing has been my passion. Always been. Yeah, yeah. How, did your parents ever feel a way about it? Of course. <laughs> yeah, doctor, be a lawyer, be a teacher. 
But like, um, when do you think they finally got it that this is his career big? He's going to make it. <laughs> I mean, they seen shades of it, but for them, it was just like they for, they they knew I was stubborn, so they knew I wasn't gonna stop. But for them, they just wanted me to have my degree. Okay, and like just finish school. So I finished school after I finished school. You was outside. There was nothing they could say. You was so, outside. There's a time I was out of school and it was lit, like. My parents would see me at the parties DJ because, you know, I'm everywhere. But to them, it wasn't, it wasn't enough for them. So I had to, like, finish school for them. So I'm a DJ with a degree. But I was an educated DJ. I like that. I like yeah. that. Guys, I can't even tell you where me and Tools met. Actually, <laughs> we met somewhere on the streets of New York, Sean. Yeah. Probably one of your parties. Crazy. I don't know if we met that time, but it was my blackout in New York. You and uh, some two girls from no, DC. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah, I came out from DC. Y'all were the first people there. Me. <laughs> like, I, 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 really, I was just like, y'all came all the way from DC. I was like, yeah, y'all had a great time. I remember. Yeah. But I, it was just like, for, I think that was the first time I could remember like meeting you. That was like 10 years ago. Yeah, I feel yeah. you for a minute. Yeah, it's all day. Dang, take it. I was 19, yeah. like 19, 20. Yeah. No, but I would go, I would see like a flyer that Tunes is doing a party. I would literally go to New York for like a day. Mm -hmm. Literally go to the party. Then the next day, I got a love and hate uh, relationship with you. <laughs> There's too much going on. Yeah, yeah, There's yeah, too yeah. many people. New York is like Lagos. No. no. New, New York is worse than Lagos. I mean, three. <laughs> like, yeah. I think. Everything. There's just Balloon. so much going on. There is so much going on. People are not even nice. You can't be on the floor dying. They will pass you. Oh, yeah, yeah. Will, don't let me make fun of your city. That's the city that you're from. No, but but that is, um, I, I now got to realize that that is Manhattan. Mm -hmm. When I now went to like Harlem. Yeah, Brooklyn. Brooklyn it was more like community based. Yeah. Like people care for each other. If you see on the floor, we go around. I swear, because I actually mm -hmm. fell one time in Brooklyn and one guy was like, oh, you are Imo? Yeah. You are We got to show you love. We got to spread love. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Got to. So, I feel like a lot of times when people here in New York, they just think of Manhattan. They don't mm -hmm. think of the other boroughs and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So what it was it like growing up as a Nigerian in New York, like in school? Were you were you familiar with your African side in like middle school? Yeah, I was middle familiar with it. School. I was familiar with it uh, growing up, but it was uh, obviously a lot of pressure from other kids being African. You know, we got called different names and stuff like that. So I won't lie to you. You know all those names that they call African, mm. like African booty scratcher. We didn't get I that in this I year. never got that. I mean, in any of my school. I mean, the, would would you say you were bullied for being African? Um, to an extent, but I would say like, take my lunch money or something. This is more like you like, African, but I didn't know how to fully defend myself at that time, like the way I do now. So I just like ate it or probably just like walked away from it. Um, but it was just like, there was just certain pressures to it. But, you know, growing up, it made me claim other things as well, like being Jamaican or <laughs> being American. You're Jamaican. I mean, like, to an extent, yeah, I get what you mean. I get I'm around these dudes all the time. So it's like, yo, I, at this point, let me just, <laughs> or, you know, so. Or being American, you know, like some people from America that are like June tell you they're American first. But at a point in time when I've done my research and I, I educated myself, I tell people I'm African first. Mm -hmm. And then I'm born over there, but mm -hmm. I'm African, if yeah. I'm African. I'm from where my Yeah. Are so if I had that pride from before, also, I brought for y'all. <laughs> nobody would be able to do nothing. <laughs> Speaking of this, yeah. let's talk about, well, how did this friendship between you and Portable come about? The pride and power. Um, I mean, it started from a tweet I did during um, um, one December like this. I think Babadi Para, he's, it was the Babu time. He's like, I'm a Babu. He was ah, wilding. And um, he was also stressing that, you know, he wants somebody, he wants a platform to, to work with. So I just tweeted like, yo. Pull up on me. No, not even. I just like, I, I wish I could have a song with Portable. Oh, really? I said something like that. Mm -hmm. Like, I want to do a song with Portable. That tweet 
went far. Like it was on not just the K, it was on gospel this, it was it was on view with all blogs and all of that. And then he DM'd me. So from there, I was like, I've entered <laughs> I can't tell the dude I'm playing around. I'm like, I've entered something. So I'm like, yo, let's do it. Came through. Um and he just it was pure love. Um he's a guy that if you keep it 100 with him, if you keep it pure with him, he's gonna keep it the same way. But if you if you keep it 99%, not one percent. I was just about to ask you. Not one percent. He's gonna oh. he's just gonna call it out. I was about to ask he's you. He's gonna that. call it out. <laughs> How would you feel if you ever woke up and he has called you out? Would you message him or you would just be like I would know I've done something wrong. That's what I would say. I, I, we've been friends for about two years now. Okay. Brought out. No, brought out wood. I have not done anything wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't. I know. Don't rip my guy. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a ripper at all. What, I, what, um, are you guys working on, have you worked on a song? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have a song called Banga out and, uh, um, yeah, that's doing really well. We did a music video in Nigeria last year. Um, and then, um, I've been bringing them out to my shows. Um, I brought him out to Blackout, that was crazy. Showed a lot of love. Mm -hmm. And I brought him out to uh, Even in the Day. I played out Even in the Day the other day. Mm -hmm. And it was crazy. Um, I love his energy. I think he's somebody that, um, you know, a lot, I know he says a lot, but like there's certain things that he says that I really, really. Yeah, I really one like. thing I definitely do agree with is who go help you, Nugu. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that is big facts. I knew that. <laughs> big, big facts. All right, moving on to ah, one of my favorite songs ever. Okay. You know, I love this song, mm -hmm. Aquala Disco. Okay. That is Terry Aquala. Ah, no, I think Terry Aquala is special. Yeah, yeah. I think he is. I think he's so underrated. I, 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 I think he's underrated, but it's okay. Your time is your time. You're going to get there. Like, your time feel, is your time. You're I feel there. like, you know, yeah, definitely. Your time is your time. Mm -hmm. uh, so what, me? how did you guys meet? Um, We've been on, like, WhatsApp okay. for a while. And how did you get to WhatsApp? Like, you know, Instagram, Instagram. we got there. Told him I loved his voice. And obviously, from listening to... Growing up to Soyo Yo by Musilio, yeah. it's just like there's no way you can hear Terry's voice and not. Is it like, crazy that he's not Yoruba? Yeah, that's wild. <laughs> that's that's God's blessing, you know. So when I realized that he almost sounded like I'm like, yo, this is the modern day version of a Musilio. So that's when I was just like, let me just try to connect the dots. Mm -hmm. You know, we was able to do it um, last December. And then I got Musili on the remix, mm -hmm. and then it just so been. The Musili really been, likes you. Yeah, yeah, that's my guy. <laughs> like, he's at a show with you, or he's always popping. Uh, yeah, like, yeah, that's my guy. This guy likes you because old people they're ready to go to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> he loves you. Yo, he's he's active. He's active. Like I can't even. He is active. I mean, you see why I see why I see does a lot of shows. He's outside. I mean, he can. Yeah. This guy Haruna Shala is active, and just get ready for. Like, um, I'm starting this new brand with the Apala Disco Night, okay. where we have everybody wearing African attire. Okay, that's you know cool. what I'm saying? And they'll be performing, giving us like a live band performance. But you know the Fuji days where you go up, like you want to spray it, you sing my name, mm -hmm. you know all of that. I'm trying to bring that element back to the yeah. vibes, you know what I'm saying? Modern day. Yeah, yeah just, you that's know. I'm hosting the next one in Lagos. December. We out. Muni Soro. So yeah, obviously you've done that. Like all your all your records have been a hit. Like you have Is Iskaba was that your first record? Yeah. Uh, uh second. Second what was But it was my first it was my first record that went crazy. <laughs> yeah. That went that went crazy. First my first record is actually get up with oh, stars and flash. Get, uh, uh, how yeah, can I forget yeah, that song? That's my joke. And so you have all these bangers, you have Iskaba with One Day Co. Yeah. Have, so how do you convince the, cause you know a lot of people, they feel like, why are DJs releasing music? Like you are not singing, you are not producing, you are just putting <laughs> your, no, that's what, that's how a lot of, that's how, I shouldn't say a lot of people, that when they first started, that's how some people felt like, okay, the DJ is just coming here to put his name on the song. And then one DJ, I can't remember who it was, they told me, I actually produced this record. 
I added elements. I told them exactly like mm -hmm. obviously they didn't write lyrics, mm -hmm. but they arranged it like this should go here, this should go here. So this is my song. Mm -hmm. You get so I'm guessing you agree with that. I mean, it's in the sense of when you say produce, what are we producing? We're producing a record. Mm -hmm. Right? We're not just making a beat. Mm -hmm. We're not just making um a song with no vo with no with no vocals. With, I mean with just vocals, okay. I mean. So it's like all of that arrangements all of the different elements that person put into it, it's actually producing a record, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like a track. Mm -hmm. so you know what I'm record. saying? Yeah. So it is their record in the sense of, you may not know how to use a camera. Mm -hmm. You may not know how to edit. But Money Talks is still mine. It's producing a show. You. You're producing right out. a show. <laughs> Do you understand? Mm -hmm. So it's that, it's that, it's, yeah. that, it's that sense. But you have knowledge of it. You know what you need to do. You know how to arrange mm -hmm. aesthetics, yeah. style, mm -hmm. celebrity. <laughs> Hi, Bash. But you know what I'm saying. So it's just in that in that sense. So lately, I've just been producing records. Um, I have my ways of um, showing my imprints on the beats or helping songwriters as well. Mm -hmm. You know, so I just make sure that you know it's from me. Yeah. At Not the end of the day, you want to think like, all right, this is a random joke. Yeah. You know, like, your tunes. Yeah, he did that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I always try to also show that element. Any artist I work with, like, I always just try to bring the best out of, out of that person. And if you hear the songs I do with them, you're going to be like, all right. Yeah, he did At least, that. yeah, he did that. <laughs> so since I know you, like you said, I've known you like 10 years, yeah, now, yeah. if not more. You've been popping since the day I knew <laughs> you. This is no, I'm just giving you your I'm best. trying, though. We're trying. <laughs> so... When Starboy approached you to yeah. join his entertainment, Starboy Entertainment, mm -hmm. as his DJ, what you're already popping. So, what made you think? Ah, you have a busy life, a busy schedule. What made you say, Ah, Omo, I can't, I can't align the two? <laughs> I mean, you know, when I was in New York, I felt like I reached a certain ceiling, and I needed to, needed to surpass it. Needed yeah, to break the ceiling. I need to break the ceiling, mm -hmm. and with called me and um, we was talking on Instagram. I got to Nigeria in December because those are those Decembers that people like us needed to just, we need to be here. We, need we don't, be. we need to make, we don't know what the hell gonna happen. Nigga, we need to shoot <laughs> kind of talk about <laughs> to my flight to Nigeria. We just knew we needed to be here. Told Wiz I was out here and then he had a meeting with me and he was just like, yo, I want to take this thing global. Oh, and I want you to be my DJ. And he did his hands like this. His hands is mad small, but when he did it like this, it looked like he was holding the world in his hand. I swear to you, it was really the craziest. I was sitting there, and he was like, yo, I wouldn't take this thing global. And it literally, we've been going global for like the last eight years. I've been to almost every city in the world because of Wiz, and I am truly grateful. I think that it's just stars aligning. Yeah. You know, at that time, I reached a certain pinnacle in New York where I learned how to DJ in the club. I could DJ a 60th birthday. I could DJ a 16. I know how to facilitate in terms of hosting or emceeing. Mm -hmm. So it kind of even helped when I worked with Wiz because yeah, I could just ever see when somebody, like, yo, who ready for Wiz, kid? Yeah. <laughs> it's the one <laughs> when the woman for me. I love when we get in front of the crowd. like. Our chemistry on stage is just like, it's unbreakable, it's remarkable. Like, I, I love Wiz. When, once we get on stage, it's a rap, bowl. it's a rap. So the fact that you have had, you've made your own name before you came into Starboy Entertainment mm -hmm. Picture, how do you balance the two? Like, for example, let's say somebody <laughs> said they got $10 million for you right now to DJ a show, <laughs> but Whiskey got a show the same day. How do you balance <laughs> I don't do you bound with this. <laughs> oh, why are you laughing? It's happening before. It's happening before. Like, what happened? <laughs> man, you know, it's saying in this game called loyalty, man. Hey, I'm a loyal guy. I'm gang. Brother, if I'm with you, I'm with you. You know what I'm saying? So I've been with Wiz for eight years. Even if somebody yeah, came along, it's been that long. Even if somebody came along with a with that kind of offer, I can look at what Wiz has done for me in the last eight years. Like, 
I got like six songs with his kid, like more than anyone else. Yeah, I think I was the most ever with him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I so, nothing. Buy me, cool me down, call by me. What else we got? BC. Uh, we get them all, <laughs> and this one we draw a blessing. That's five. That's one more. Mm-hmm. All right, I can't remember the last one. Turn up with Ricardo Banks, six. Like, you feel me? I'm out here working. I make. I feel you, I feel you. <laughs> I feel you. Shout out to WizKid. Shout out to him. There's no amount that they can buy me from you, Baba. I deal with you for life. One eight. Two is like, huh? One eight for your first part. One eight for your Nah, 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 nah. We lawyer. We lawyer. You, so another thing is, um, I know you're very, one thing about you, you're, you're loyal, but you also like, you know how to navigate, like you yeah, know, yeah, do the whole pick size thing, yeah, yeah. Uh, hitting, <laughs> hitting people against each other yeah. thing. That's one thing I like about you. Like yeah. I always still see you show David a love, like mm-hmm. wherever you see him, mm-hmm. and like you just keep the same energy. Oh, yeah. So how do you now feel when like you see their fan bases? Like even when two of them, they might even be the coolest, mm-hmm. but their fan bases are trying to pit them against each other. I'm just hoping that one day we can all come together. <laughs> I feel like um, they are wasting their time, but they really, they, they're just, I, they I love I feel it. like they really like each other. They, they <laughs> no, I'm telling you. I think Like, so whenever too. I see them hug mm-hmm. or they're talking. Wait, wait, you talking about the fan base or the no, guys no, themselves? The guys themselves. Okay, if you're talking about the guys themselves, yeah, it's love. Yeah, like, love. I feel like they really like I thought you were talking about the fan base. Oh, no, the guys the love The fan themselves. base is they don't truly, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> the guys love themselves. It's big love. They saw each other last December. And it's big love. I'm just hoping that we can go on tour together. Starboy. Dati BG. I hope on the that tour will be my eh? You feel me? The That's what we need to do right now. Mind. That's what we need the to do. Be. So yeah, so you said that um you ran into David O at a beach place and he told you he's been looking for weed. Yeah. I mean, it was like I was about to leave. Skylar was DJing even in the day. Wiz was there, we was all day. We was there for a long time. We outdoor, I was getting hungry. I'm about, I'm leaving and I, I just quickly ordered like a burger on the side, you know, Good Village got the yeah. restaurants and stuff, my good beach. So I ordered a burger and I just hear Commotion. Commotion. Hey room. Just people getting slapped to I'm like, yo, who is that? I see OBO in the middle of the road just walking. I go in the middle of the road, I just go like this. Run out. I was like, yo, he came straight to me, same style. He was like, where is? I'm like, yo, I'll take you to him now. Mm-hmm. And then I just took him straight to him at the party. And, you know, you just saw the love, you saw the connection, yeah. you saw the brotherhood, you saw the chemistry. And it's just, it's something that's needed in our industry and it's needed in, in the world today. Like, just spread love. So when you uploaded that video, did you see when Sam Clef called you out and he's, he's the one? <laughs> <laughs> He's the one that connected them. Give me my props. I'm no, the one that no, 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 no. you didn't see that. I saw. I saw. I saw a lot. To be honest with you, I got abused a lot for that. But I think people didn't see the bigger picture. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The bigger picture is these guys coming together. Yeah. Doing the collaboration. Did you feel away when you saw him say that? No. I sound careful. I'm big. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> like, I'm not worried. Oh, I I'm not worried. <laughs> I'm good. That's, me and him are cool. I don't know problem with anybody in this room. But my thing is, you know, anybody can criticize certain things. That, you know, I realize in this life, when anything you talk about, somebody's going to feel the type of way. Yeah, 100%. You know, they feel happy. When they feel sad, they feel, they go off take it. They feel away. <laughs> so at the end of the day, my whole point was just like, I would really love in my lifetime. Yeah. Would love to see these two it'll guys. Happen. I think it'll happen. Amen. I don't think it'll happen in the next. <laughs> I'm serious. In like the next one or two years. I pray it happen. I, I, think, I was gonna say five years, but I think that. I think it's beautiful for our culture. I think it would be. I think it would just be lit. Like mm-hmm. all three of them, to be honest. Yeah. Will be lit. That would even be more. What? That would my. <laughs> Call it fantastic for I don't know, day on top power. It's just. You know what I mean? And with all the young talent that's growing now, I just feel like um, it's real dope to come together. Yeah. Um, Shali Poppy and I'm doing dudes doing her most wanted. Yeah, most wanted. And it's just it just looks so dope. Mm-hmm. 
-hmm. seeing them together. It looks the concept. Yeah, the concept, the culture, it just and you really know what they're about. So it's just like this is perfect, you know. So I think there's power in collaboration. Um uh, Wiz and David O's do a track. I wanna have that song. <laughs> that I saw them I saw them on a song together before, but you you could tell that it wasn't it wasn't I can't remember what song it was, but it wasn't cool. It wasn't like Yeah, it was done properly. Yeah. Somebody took this from there. Exactly. This <laughs> like I'm even sure it was like, why did you put this out? I didn't yeah, like, yeah. But yeah, but I get what you're saying, like a global hit. Like on only two of them. Nobody else. Cause that song that I'm talking about, I think if there was other people in there, for so, only two of them would it'll be, be it would just be it be big for the culture. You see what happens when uh, Wiz and Bernard did a song, Jim Josh, it lit, you know what I'm saying? I'm loving the oh. makeups. Look at Simi and Tiwa Savage, yeah. Ira and Tam. I didn't even hear the song. The picture alone got me. Men are crazy. I was... I'm crazy. <laughs> ah, this is that picture. <laughs> I know I didn't go live good life. It went off with AG. AG probably took the shot. Like, yeah. man. <laughs> nah, I love that. Golden love Pinks. La, 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 la. I, I love what the ladies are doing. I just feel like there's a power in collaboration. 100%. And it's, it's needed for our culture because you know, divide and conquer. If we keep dividing each other and everybody want to do their own, do their own, do their own. It doesn't make sense. You know what I'm saying? If we come together, if we really know who the big dogs are, we all come together that we do what we got to do and it'll all work out. All right. So let's talk about your little copyright issue with Tony. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you always laughing? You, always, you don't even let me finish. I forgot that this was news at one point. Yeah. Like, uh, oh, wait, Tony Tatula, have you sorted it? I've sorted it. Are you guys on good terms? We're well, good terms. You gave him what he wanted. I gave him what he wanted. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> guys, I'm not going to lie about you. Shout out to DJ Tunes for gracing our studio today on Money Talks. So much love. Make sure you follow him on all platforms, DJ underscore Tunes. Make sure you go get his music on all platforms, too, because we got to eat. You hear me? Oh, yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. That I eat. Yeah. lovely. TV watching TV and bad girl come on. So you know, yeah, no money talk. <laughs>